presented by Church Tech U, it's the Pro Presenter Show. On today's show, how to send a lower third background to one output while sending a full screen background to another. Hi and welcome again to the Pro Presenter Show. This is the show where I help you learn about Pro Presenter. My name is Paul Allen Clifford. So this is a question that I hear quite a lot when people say, well, I used to have the master control module, but they don't make it yet for Pro 7. So how can I send a full screen to my projectors, for example, and a lower third to the uh, live stream? Oh, and they have graphics under both of them, and they're different graphics. Well, I thought that I'd show you just the way to do it, and it's actually not all that hard, but there are a couple of things that you have to keep in mind. So here's the first thing I did. I created a presentation that had four different slides on it. Now ignore the fact that there's nothing right here. Instead, imagine that it looks just like this. I think this is a glitch. I'm testing a beta version. But uh, other than that, this is where I started. So in order to do that, let's uh, go into the editor up here. And you'll notice that this is actually on the slides layer. That's very important for what I'm about to show you. So um, basically, I created a new slide by clicking this, add new slide down here. Okay. And then I clicked here. And then I added a shape. That's very important, and I'll tell you why here in just a second. So I added a shape, and then instead of filling that with the color, first I made it the size that I want it to be. And then I, um, instead of filling it with the color, I filled it with media. And I navigated to where this is. These are uh, slides, by the way, that Church Motion Graphics created. Uh, they do some really good work over there. If you're interested at all, um, I do have an affiliate link, tdm.fyi slash cmg, short for Church Motion Graphics. And if you sign up, I'll get a little bit of something. doesn't cost you any more. So anyway, all that to say, um, so this was uh, these here, and I just uh, picked the appropriate one. So let's say that I wanted to do the um, just the title so I did that and then I click OK here and it fills it with this not all that helpful I'm gonna have to make this you know as big as this screen so I did that and that's how I got this one okay so that's pretty simple did the same thing with this one uh, without any graphics, any text on it, and I uh, added a text box. You'll want to format your text box the way you want it to be. Then I uh, did another one, and this is, again, just basically the same thing. It's a shape that's filled. But take a look at a couple of things that I did here. First off, this is the same exact graphic as up here. I could do a different graphic, but just for fun I did the exact same one. And then I went into Inspector and I tweaked some of the properties here. So um, you'll notice that I uh, set this to fill center and uh, that's important as well so that is good I could also go in here and crop it if I needed to but what I did instead is if you look up here you'll notice position I've set to 800 pixels and uh, size I set to 1920 by 300 and then I just tweak that until it's just perfect right and then I duplicated that onto this one and I changed the graphic that's uh, part of this fill here. For some reason, it didn't update this in the this uh, preview, but it's there. And this one is basically this one. 
crop down to where we only see the little heart graphic on uh, the heart milk art on top of the uh, coffee here. So that's what that looks like. Notice I put the text on top of that as well. So I'll show you what that looks like here in just a second. So I made that and then I highlighted all of them and right clicked and went to theme and did new theme from selection and that created a theme with each individual slide in it. I could have done that in the um, in the theme editor if I wanted to but I just think it's easy to use the exact same editor that you're used to having and if you want to tweak things you can go back to that presentation and not go through all the themes. So that's where I started. Then I created this. So basically right here what I have is I have um, two versions on each slide. So here I have the regular full screen one which if I click on that it's like that but if I go down here to um, camera you'll see hi it's me but um, with the coffee lower third graphic here so and if I do this one it says not everyone loves coffee but I sure do and going back to the alpha which in this case is the output for my projector screen it's a full screen graphic with text one thing you might notice is this text is a slightly different size than it is uh, down here in not screen one oh i have to look past my camera to get to it and there we go there we go so it's a slightly different size uh, from here and here so let me make that uh, slides layer go away and um, let me show you how I did that so if we go back up here to well first off it's a little too much me on the screen so let's go back to alpha and this one okay there we go so if we um, go up here to screens and then edit looks you'll see my camera output and my alpha so I have two different looks one and they look pretty much identical from this standpoint but what you should know is this look under the camera which needs the lower third has the coffee and it has this template here the one with the title hence the reason it's called announcement title then I have this other one and if I click on it and go to coffee it has this one which is the one that for whatever reason isn't updating the preview but it's there because you saw it um, so that's the one I'm using for that circumstance now one other thing that I need to do is I need to actually change the look for each output uh, each time I click on one of these slides now you could imagine maybe this is an announcement time maybe this is the sermon in which case you would just have a difference between the full screen graphics unless you wanted full screen graphics in both places but that would be uh, different um, if you wanted the uh, title screen where it's full screen in person and lower third online then you right click you go add action audience look 
and then you change it to, in this case, announcement title. It's not letting me do that because I already have it changed to announcement title. Then I have another one right here, and that one has the add action, audience, look, announcement, other. So it's changing between those two looks based on what you need. One thing that I did run into is um, if I add another slide here, notice here we have text so and we have a picture and we'd expect that to uh, go away when we went to the next slide because these stay, um, they're just on the slides layer. But as soon as I click on this, you'll notice that if I go down here to TV, yeah, camera out, that it's back. So why is that the case? Well, because this is applying the template no matter what. So in order to get rid of that, what I did was I created another one which didn't have that. So it just went back to the normal um, regular one. So. That's what this little icon up here is. This is an audience look. Looks a little like a disguise, if you can make that out. It's like Groucho Marx glasses and a mustache, you know, the little cheesy disguise. So that's the audience look icon. So now if I click back here, since I just changed this audience look, you'll notice that that still is right there. So, um, and there's nothing on the alpha regular output because these are living on the slides layer. So that is how I did it. If you wanted to do that with video, you've got a couple of decisions to make. First off, if you were to do that with video and you wanted the video to stay the same from slide to slide, as if it was a background video like this, you know, where I, I'm on this slide and then I go to this slide and back and forth it doesn't make a difference. Since video is underneath the slides layer, in this case, it doesn't restart. But if you were to put it on the slides layer, it would restart. So that's very important for you to know that um, if you wanted to maintain continuity, this isn't the trick to use. And I'll try and figure out a way to do this with video because that's another thing that's worth uh, figuring out. But in the meantime, this is how you would do it with stills. If you like this content, I bet you'd like my uh, online church tech training community, Church Tech U. Head over to churchtechu.com and uh, sign up to get a copy of my ProPresenter 6 and 7, so whichever you need, keyboard shortcuts. It's just a cheat sheet. You can download it. And by doing that, you'll uh, join my email newsletter. And I'll tell you every time one of these tutorials comes out. And... I'll also give you the heads up when there's a sale at Church Tech U or something even more exciting. Until next time, this is Paul Allen Clifford from TrinityDigitalMedia.com and ChurchTechU.com reminding you to go out and change eternity.